In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this wonderful volume wave effect and animate it that you're looking at here. And I think this is a really neat way to visualize electromagnetic waves because I think it's a little bit more physically consistent with the actual wave. You know, drawing a little line in the shape of a sine wave, that can be misleading. I think this is a little bit more clear and a little bit more fancy. So let's get right into this. Let's close this movie. And we're starting with a fresh version of Blender. And we won't go too crazy here with modeling something. So we will create our wave inside of this cube here. But first, let's just stretch it along the x-axis. So I'm going to press S and X, which lets me scale along the x-axis. And I'll stretch it to something like this. And so we will create our volume wave inside of this. Now let's have this wave repeat over, let's say 40 frames. So I'll come down here where it says end at 250 and we're going to end at 40. And any number from 20 to 40 works pretty good. Longer than that, I think the, the wave is just moving too slowly. If you want that, then that's fine. Anything less than 20, I think it looks a little bit jumpy, but 40 should look pretty good. With that said, let's get into the shading. So we'll click on the shading tab and let's orient this a little bit to the side so we can see what's going on. And let's give us a lot more space for the nodes down here. And we are ready to get started. Now we're going to do volume shading. And right now we have a surface shader here. We're going to keep that here because I wanna look at some intermediate results. It's real easy to do with a surface shader. And then when we get near the end, we'll jump to the volume shader. So with that said, let's move this stuff over to the right. Let's begin by bringing in our coordinates. So that's under input, texture coordinate. And this almost always followed with a mapping. So under vector mapping. And we have various options for what type of coordinates to bring in. Let's use the generated. Now the output of this is our X, Y, Z coordinates throughout the volume of our object, but they're all mixed into this vector quantity. If we want to animate a wave propagating in the X direction, we want to be able to get to the X coordinates separate from the rest. So the next thing we're going to do is under converter, go down to separate X, Y, Z, and that will be our next node. We'll connect the vector output of the mapping node to the vector input of the separate X, Y, Z. And now we have access to X, Y, and Z separately. And so in fact, we could animate a wave going in X or Y or Z or even other directions by rotating it over here. We're just going to simulate a wave, not a simulate is not the right word, animate a wave in the X direction. So we will proceed with X. Now, if I feed this X into the base color, it's going to color it basically in proportion to the X coordinate. And so we're going in this case from some low X value, probably zero to one over the, over the cross section of this device. Well, we want this to be a sine wave. So let's calculate the sine of that X coordinate. So we'll go in here under converter down to the math node. And let's change this from add over to sine. Cosine would work just as well. I will select sine. Now this doesn't seem to have changed anything. And that's because our numbers were going from zero to one and sine of zero to one is still basically going from zero to one. So we don't notice anything. We need to feed this sign a bigger range of numbers. So in fact, what we should do is add another math node right between the separate and the X, Y, Z. And we'll change this from add to multiply. And now we can increase this number. And what we can see is now we're getting more wave cycles because instead of going from zero to one, now we're going from like zero to 20 or 30. And so it goes through many cycles of two pi. And so this number right here basically controls how many wave cycles we're going to visualize. So we'll pick anything that looks nice and go with that. And we'll go ahead and just line up these nodes to look a little bit nicer. 
Now to animate these, we can't really just use this slider. That's not animating the wave. That's changing the number of wavelengths. We need something else. And to do this, we want to add a static phase to this sine function. So let's go ahead and add to input value. And we'll stick this down here. And then we also need a math node. So we'll go down to converter math and we'll stick that right between the multiply and the sign. And then we'll connect the output of the value node to the input of the add node. And it doesn't appear that we've done anything, but watch what happens when we change this value. Now the wave doesn't change the number of cycles, but it is looks like it's moving. And we whether we're incrementing or decrementing these numbers, it goes one way or the other. Now, as I increase the numbers under value, the wave looks like it's going backwards, and I probably don't want it to be that way. So I will change add to subtract. And now when I increase numbers under this value, now the wave goes forward. And I think that just makes it a little bit more intuitive to work with. There is our basic sign function. So I'm going to highlight this group of nodes, not highlighting the value, not highlighting the surface shader, just this group of nodes. And I'm going to press Control J, and that wraps them into a frame. And I'd like to change this name. So I'm going to go up here and click on this little left arrow. And under Label, I will call this Calculate Volume sine wave. Now it doesn't look like a volume sine wave yet because we're still using a surface shader, but it's not time to switch over. And this node over here, rather than call it value, let's call this phase. And that will remind us, oh, okay, that's the phase. And we'll set this to zero for right now. This might be a good time to go ahead and animate our wave. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, Back in layout, here's our, our movie, and we can zoom in on this a little bit. So we have 40 frames. So it makes sense at frame one to have our phase for the wave be zero. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the render button here so we can see the wave. Let's define frame one to be phase zero. So if we go into our shading, we click on this, we can make this zero phase a keyframe. Now what we want to do is go our 40 frames and make that 2 pi phase, but there's going to be a trick here. So back to layout. Now, right now, if I slide this, I don't see my wave moving, and that's because we haven't set a second keyframe, so that phase term is always zero. Now, if I move out to frame 40, if I were to set that phase to be 2 pi at frame 40, the wave would look like it would repeat, except I would have two frames with the same phase, 0 and 2 pi, and that might look like a tiny glitch. So in fact, what I want to do is go out to frame 41, even though our movie only goes up to 40 frames, but I'll set frame 41 to be where the 2 pi phase is. That way, when this is played and repeat, it's a nice smooth repetition. So we can go back into our shader, and here... We type in two times 3.14159265.4, and that's more digits than we would possibly need there. And then we will say insert keyframe. So now if we go back to layout, we can play this and watch what happens. We see our wave moving, but look how it sort of speeds up and slows down. And that's the extrapolation mode. That's something that we need to fix. So we go back into shading. We make sure that this phase node is selected. We'll go into the animation tab. And then under channel, there's extrapolation mode. We want to set that to linear. Now we can go back to our layout. If we play this. We should see a nice linear uh, increase of our wave. And that, that looks nice. So our animation is done. We just now need to finish the shading. So we go back into the shading tab. Maybe we don't want to keep watching this being animated. So I will stop that, go back to frame, frame one, and back into shading. OK, so now we look at these colors. 
what we can see is that there is seems to be some there seems to be some nice grading in the white regions, but the black is just flat black. And that's because when the sine wave spits out negative numbers, the coloring doesn't know what to do with that. It wants to see numbers that go from zero to one. And so we need to fix this. So the way we can fix this is to do two different things with this. One is for color, and then the other is to somehow control density in our volume wave. So let's add a math node. And we're going to do a comparison here. So let's make this a less than or greater than. Either would work. Let's choose less than. And we're going to feed the output of the sine wave to the input of the less than comparison and set the threshold to 0. So now anytime our sine wave is less than 0, it's going to spit a 0 out of its output. Anytime it's greater than 0, it will spit a 1 out of its output. So we can use this now to select between two different colors that we'll use for our positive or negative parts of the wave. So let's go to add and then under color, there's mix RGB. We can feed the value to the factor of the mix RGB node. And this lets us choose colors for positive and negative. So let's go ahead and make one of these a nice bright red. And we'll make the other a nice bright blue. And now if we feed the color into the base color of our surface shader, we can see that red is in the positive regions and blue is in the negative regions. However, we've lost our sense of amplitude because we just see flat red and blue. And that's fine because we're going to convey the amplitude through the density of this volume wave. So just to make this look nice, I've highlighted these two nodes. And I will press Control J to wrap a frame around those. And let's rename this frame to something like Pause Neg Color. Remind us that's where we're generating our positive and negative colors, and we can control them here. We want to bring the amplitude information back. So at this point, this is where I want to get rid of the surface shader. So I'll just highlight that and delete it. And we want to bring in a volume shader. So principled volume is what we're going to use. And I'm going to connect the output volume to the input volume of the material output. And there's no input, so that way we just see this sort of flat grayish cloud. Now, if we feed our sine wave into, let's say, density, now we get these wave fronts, but we have these gaps here, and the gaps are because this does not know what to do with the negative numbers from the sine wave. So let's take the absolute value of that. So we'll go down here under Converter, Math node again, and we'll select Absolute. So that way positive numbers stay positive and negative numbers become positive. And let's connect that to density. Now we have our positive and negative wave fronts. However, they look the same. And that's OK because we created their colors up here. So we can simply feed the color output into the color input of our principled volume shader. And now we have blue sort of fog for the negative part of the wave and the red fog for the positive. We will want some controls to adjust the amplitude and how that appears. And depending on our render settings or what color we have in the background, we may want to do different things for scaling this amplitude. So that's what we're going to do down here. And so we definitely need the absolute value. The next thing I like to follow this with is with an exponent. So let's add a math node. And we'll select power. There it is, power. So what that's going to do, it's going to take the absolute value of our sine wave and raise it to this power. As 0.5, that's a square root, and that works really good. I think in EV for cycles, I tend to like squaring or maybe just raise it to the 1.5 power. And that can even change depending whether you have a white background or a black background. And let's go with a white background. So I'm going to go into the world settings. And I'm going to make the background white. And to make that truly white, I'm going to click on the material settings. I'm sorry. I want to click on my render settings and go down to color management. 
and from filmic to standard. Okay, now if I click on this last button to render it, I get my nice white background. It gives me a better idea of what these are going to look like against my white background. And I can control this. Right now I'm taking the square root. If I square that, I can see I have a little bit more discrete waves, whereas the square root tends to distribute them out. I can even look at just the power of one, which means it doesn't do anything. And you know maybe that looks good to you as well. One other control we might want, I'll copy and paste that, and we'll change power to multiply. So we can make that look a little bit stronger or not. So set to a value of one, nothing is happening. So let's go ahead and select these three nodes, press Control J to wrap it into a frame, and then we'll name this frame Scale Amplitude. And now we can line up these frames and that looks pretty nice. We can zoom out and see everything and we have stuff labeled. And I think that's a, a pretty good way to go with. So we may think that this is a little bit dull and we would like to maybe make this glow. Well, what happens if we feed color down to emission color? Well, that doesn't do anything. That's because there's no emission strength. What if I just crank the emission strength up to something like five? Well, that's coloring it everywhere. That's not necessarily what I want to do. I really only want to color it where I have intense fields. So in fact, rather than just make emission strength something that's just a static number, let's take the output of the amplitude and feed that to emission strength. Now we have a nice bright cloud, and I think that looks really good. And uh, it's not going to look good if we just try to animate it here because the, the rendering's not quite fast enough. But if we were to render a movie, we would get a nice smooth wave. And I think this looks really good. And we are rendering right now an EV. We can look at this with cycles. And just remember to go back in that amplitude scaling and play with things until you get a wave that is something that you would like. And I think this looks pretty good. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found this helpful.